Okay, good afternoon or good morning, depending on where you're located. Welcome to our Practice of Power Academy webcast, a very special one today, actually today and next, uh, next Monday. Uh, this webcast actually kicks off our 2017 business planning process. And for those of you who have been around for a bit, uh, a couple things I want to just kind of go over. Uh, this is going to be very unique. In the, uh, in the invitation I sent out, I had mentioned that uh, it would really help matters if you have access to Practice Power Academy and are online as we're doing this uh, because what I'm going to do real time uh, both today and next Wednesday is walk you through the review and recap process real time. So in essence, uh, we'll be working live uh, for the next 45 minutes or so on various elements of the review process. So uh, for those of you who actually have logged in to uh, go to webinar and are uh, viewing uh, actually my personal dashboard here on Practice Power, uh, what I want to do before we get into it is just um, kind of walk you through the process of where you need to be and uh, what we need to do. And obviously, you know, we always have, and I've got multiple screens here, so if I look off, don't. I'm not like checking the news or anything. Um, just that if you have questions, uh, you can definitely post them and I will handle them real time as I would handle them uh, in our business planning event. So uh, very quickly, what, what we're doing today is really going to be uh, starting the benchmarking process of 2016. In addition to that, what we're going to be doing next week is completing that benchmark. The, the, the thing that is important is that this is how we're going to do the 19th, 20th, and 21st of December in terms of walking through the 20, your 2017 uh, business planning process. I know a couple of you uh, submitted questions and I will get to them uh, before we uh, end our, our webcast today. Like I said, we can go up to an hour. I won't go past that. Uh, it all depends on where we are uh, when, uh, you know, at, and when, when time's called. So a couple of things I want to do first. Uh, here, uh, let me uh, let me make sure you, you're you're seeing my main screen, uh, which yeah you are, which is great. So the first thing is when, once you log into Practice Power Academy, you're going to notice you're going to come to the dashboard, okay? And where we're going to spend most of our time over the next several weeks is right here in in Business Plan Builder. So I'm going to go ahead and click Business Plan Builder. And what's going to happen is you're going to be taken to the uh, Business Planning Center. Now, we don't need to listen to myself talk because uh, I'm going to do it live here. But there's a couple things. So if you are an Elite Access member, you have access to the bench, to the PDF. And so you'd go, you'd click on that, you'd grab it, and this is exactly the handout that we would use in the benchmarking process over the next, over the next two weeks. In addition, when it comes time to do business planning, you're going to have access to the entire, literally, 57-page business planning document. Again, if you're a lead access member. So if you're not, uh, next uh, next day or so, or maybe now, uh, would be a good time for you to go ahead and upgrade to that. Okay. But for our time today, what we're going to do is we're going to work inside of the review and benchmarking section inside of, of Business Plan Builder. So one of the things, the reason why, the reasons why a benchmarking is so important is there are two things that all advisors need to do. Uh, number one is you need to go ahead and really understand what you're doing that needs to change for the new year. And then and additionally, you need to memorialize what you do good at. Hey, what did work? Because, you know, what's the old saying? Hey, I did, if something really worked well and I what? I forgot, I stopped doing it, right? So this is the way that we stop, we stop that. Uh, in addition, once we get going, and we're in three minutes, by the way, we're going to actually go start doing this real time. The other reason why we want to do this is we want to go ahead and actually have a a, a you know, a basically like a, 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 a legacy, a, a um, a um, history of how we did. So when you go back to, I went back to the dashboard here if you're watching online, uh, you'll see when you go to dashboard, you'll see something called my member materials. And in my member material, this is your hub. So as you create things inside of Practice Power Academy, 
and lo and behold, what do we have? Review and benchmarking. So this is where this is where your business plan will be housed. All eight modules. The review and benchmarking, and this is just some examples. So, so every time you do a segment of benchmarking, look, we started here on 2013, second 2013, and some of these are just examples. You can literally go in and see exactly what you wrote up to the first time you did this. So in essence, you have a history. We save it for you. You never have to go searching for anything. Okay, so I just want to let you know that that's part of what we do here, and that's why I went through the expense of creating the site, the system, so you have everything there. So I just want to make sure that we're all all clear on that. All right, so let's get into business. Let's get back into business plan builder. And like I said, when we do the business planning workshop, we're going to go into all these modules. Each you know each segment we got six, we got three segments. Uh, we got three segments. Each segment is going to be. Um, you know, covered in one of the uh, one of the session. So, with that being said, let's get to this. So, here's what I'm going to do. Um, real time. So, what I what I tend to do is I'm going to say, hey, let's start this now, and I'm going to say, hey, you you know, in the next three to five minutes, let's uh, let's cover this, right? And you're gonna you're gonna write or type in your answer, all right? So, for example, um, just kind of scroll down for a second, right? Let's go ahead and take a look at where we're going to start. So, for example. Uh, benchmarking period. Are you benchmarking this as uh, you know the last quarter? Are you benchmarking the entire year? So what you want to do now is just kind of you know pick the dates. Is this going to be a benchmark for the entire 2016 year? Uh, some of my clients have benchmark twice a year. We'll do it as part of a mid-year review, and then we'll do it at the end of the year to get ready for business planning. So again, pick your window and uh, take a moment and kind of get that in there. Or again, if you're writing. You know, again, make sure you put the timelines in there that you have. Okay. Now, let me explain the narrative part. So I'm going to give you guys literally two or three minutes, and I may talk, I may just be quiet, I may just take questions if there are questions. Um, what I want you to do is take. Is, I know it says take ten minutes here, but we're, I'm going to truncate this. And and by the way. Um, I would definitely encourage you at the conclusion of this, whether today or between now and next week, go back and just make sure this is what this is your thinking on all this. All right. So the first thing is 50,000 foot view of your personal professional world. So if you're doing this for 2016, here's my question to you: How was 2016? So start typing or writing. You know, um, hey, what were your major wins? What were some of the things that didn't go according to plan? You know, think of it. Think of it as if I said to you, and you you had your own personal board of directors, and I said, okay, for the next three minutes, I want you to give an oral report on how 2016 went, the good, the bad, ugly, personally, professionally. You know, take two or three minutes and just you know, again, will you narrative? You want to do a narrative? You want to do bullet points? Whatever you want to do, uh, be as descriptive as possible. Uh, this is you memorializing. The year, or the half year, or however you want to you want to position this with yourself. Okay, so take another, take two or three minutes, type or write, or if you're just going to take some notes and you've got a legal pad or whatever you've got, right? Hey, that's fine too. Follow along, do that. But I'm I'm going to be quiet now for another minute or two, and just go ahead and do that, please. Do you have any client wins, any health wins, any personal wins? Again, just give yourself a little narrative here. The one thing I would encourage you to do, again, you can type and listen to me. Your brain will, your subconscious will, will, will listen to me. The, the whole key on this is nobody's going to read these but you. So honesty. Don't lie to yourself. Be authentic. Be raw. Do not lie to yourself. If it was a great year, be proud. If it was an okay year, be grateful. If it was a crappy year, resolve to make next year a better year. Right? Very simple. All right? 
So, so, so uh, I do have a question, so everybody keep writing. So Dave asks, is dashboard itself is part of the lead access? Uh, uh, no, dashboard, uh, every member, as long as you're registered, uh, will have access to dashboard. That's kind of our, our, that's where we stop, that's our hub. Now, whether you have access to the rest of the site depends on whether you have elite access or not. Okay, I'll bring answers to the question. All right, so take another minute on that. I gotta give yourself a narrative, a little story. Think of the story, a little descriptive, right? Um, I know some of you technicians like to think in terms of uh, bullet points, that's fine. Uh, whatever, however it makes sense to you, that's what we want. Okay? All right. Next, next piece, because I do want to, again, kind of move this along, is wins. What are you most proud of for the year? So, you know, again, some of it may already be in the first section, but, I, but here's what I want you to do, and this is the, what we did live um, uh, recently at, at an event. Don't make this a narrative. I want you now to think in terms of just bullet points. So what are you proud of? Uh, the marketing, a client win, um, something you did personally, your health, how you dealt with your personal relationships. I want you to, to really give yourself a list of wins, and here's why that's important. Most human beings go through life always fixated on what didn't get done, what they did not achieve where they failed, the inequities, the injustices, so on and so forth. And every human being has wins. It's always something to be proud of. Right? You can always be proud of your integrity. Uh, you can always be proud of your professionalism. There's a lot of things to be proud of. So I want you to take a moment and really write those down. Capture them. Again, Bullet format, I, the way I would do this, I would do this more of a bulleted format going forward. So take about a, I'm going to give you a few, I'm going to give you a minute or two on this. What are you most proud of in terms of working with a client, serving them? Did you have a good, a good marketing win, business development win, a uh, personal win? Did you overcome an obstacle? Again, memorialize that now, please. I right, take about another 30 seconds. Like I said, I want you to think, be present. Give yourself the gift of gratitude. There's always things you did well. I don't care, I don't care who's on, I don't care who's going to listen to this, who's here live on this webcast or who's going to listen to the replay. There's always something to be proud of. There's always something to be grateful for. Okay. Um, let's wrap that question up, and uh, let's move to the uh, next question, next topic, right? Uh, which obviously is, this, is the other side of it, right? Which is uh, failures, learning experiences, frustrations. And, and again, I think the same rule applies with, right, bullet points. Let's bullet it out from that perspective. A um, couple things regarding this, okay? Um, a, lot of, a lot of human beings, obviously here also in this industry, look at failure as a bad thing. And I think there are levels of failure, okay? Um, I, for one, and I've said this, and this is nothing new for some of you, um, I believe failure is a good thing because I think, unfortunately, a lot of things in life are only learned when they don't work, okay? Where the travesty lies is when things don't work and you don't learn why. Why didn't that work? Or how come that didn't happen, right? That's why, for example, when you have a prospect say no to you and go to a competitor, uh, one of the things I highly recommend is say, look, I'm not going to try to change your mind. Can we spend five or ten minutes on the phone? I just want to understand your thought process, right, or, how, or why you decided what you did, right? You always want to look because if I don't learn from something, then it is failure, okay? So where so where do you so think about it again bullet points and not that we're going to sit there and fixate on this but the failures and frustrations a lot of times 
are going to be the drivers, the drivers of change next year for you. So, you know, we got to take the bad with the good and the good with the bad. As again, I'm talking, just keep writing and typing out again, bulleted form. My hope is it's not going to take more space than, than you need, right, from that perspective. And just think about it. You know, think about it from personal, professional, business development, client. Did you, did you make commitments to yourself for 2016? And, you know, here we are, almost mid-December. You didn't carry them out. Why? What happened? So take a moment or two, come up with that. I think about another 30 seconds on that. I'll wrap that piece up. Okay. So last question of, of the narrative section before we get into the actual benchmarking. Okay. In your opinion, what must you do different going forward? What are your commitments? Let me, before you write, I'm going to take a minute or two on because this is a very important question. If your brain says, you know, I don't really need to do anything, little, you know, again, what's the definition of insanity? Let's do the same thing over and over again, expect a different outcome, right? We all heard that. I want to know, and there's two words in there that are not highlighted, but I'm going to highlight them when we tweak this again. The word must. What must you do different? Next word, commitment. What are you going to commit to? Because here's the thing, and I'm very wishing for things to happen, hoping for things to happen, usually does not make them happen in this industry. It's too competitive. There's too many things going on. There's way too much change. And you know, this is this year, if you think about it, we are undergoing the biggest change that most of us have ever seen in the industry and will continue to see over the next several years. Whether DOL happens or not, I know a lot of you sitting there hoping it doesn't happen. Hey, a lot I think that I think that horse has left the barn in some you know in a lot of different ways. So let me ask you the question. Twenty seventeen. What are you gonna do different? What must you do different? Why commit to it? So think about that, okay? And here's the other piece as you, again, start typing it, and that's fine. Look, if you want to do bullets or narrative here, that's fine. Either way you want to do. But again, I'm going to talk and you guys type or write. Sometimes it's better not to think in terms of, and you, by the way, um, when we go through the benchmarking between today and, and next, next Wednesday, you're going to have a very good picture of what you need to focus on in 2017, okay? But with that being said, I want you to look at your behaviors first. So when you say differential, when I, when, I, when I evaluate somebody and, you know, look at them from a coaching perspective, you know, I'm always going to focus in on, on a couple things. And we're going to cover them in great detail in the business planning part. Is first off, what does this person believe? So what's their belief set? In other words, their psychology. I'm going to look at that because that's going to drive a lot of their behaviors, right? So, for example, if you believe that this business is getting harder, guess what? You give yourself permission to be average. If you believe it's tough to get new clients, guess what? You give yourself permission not to try hard and all those things. So I'm going to look at a person's psychology, and then I'm going to look at their habits. How do they operate daily? Right? And we're going to do some benchmarking on that. So I, I want you to think about it. What, so don't be, well, I need to get more. I need to do better at. Those are, those are just very uh, nebulous terms. I need you to get as specific as possible. What's going to be your difference going forward? How do you want to do that? Right? So take a minute or two. If you have some questions, uh, great. 
So, so we are. So Dave asks, you know, I am in the I am in the review and benchmark in the narrative section. So I'm not in I'm not in the modules yet. I'm in the review and benchmark, Dave. Okay, so we're going to work through that. I take another 30 seconds, and then what I want to do is I want to do a couple benchmarks, and I want to walk you through that each one. Explain why each one's important. Okay. And there was a couple questions that we did get um, prior to this part of registration. Uh, I know that uh, Preston uh, had a comment, and I, I don't know if he's here or not, but if he's here, uh, hopefully he'll get my answer to the comment. Uh, you know, basically, if, if for some reason, so as you know, we're all, we're, we are recording these. So if there's some reason why you can't make a session uh, on the 19th, 20th, or 21st, because again, they're four hours, so we're going to go, again, registration is 11.30 Eastern, right, 12 to 4, 12 to 4, 12 to 4. Um, I will take bathroom breaks. I'm not going to stand here for four hours in front of you and do this. Uh, even I can't do that. Um, we will take some breaks from time to time, um, but we are going to record them, and I've been, to I've been told uh, by the uh, go-to webinar people that we can do four-hour recording, so we're going to hope that works. Uh, if for some reason it doesn't work, the beauty of practice power is the videos are there, and I'll show you that you know in two weeks when we kind of get ready to get going on, on module number one. Okay, from there. All right. So with that being so, so as far as Preston's question goes, as far as uh, if you miss something, we're going to you know we're going to make these part of the record, uh, part of the review process. Uh, you know, in terms of the recordings, you'll have access to those. Uh, we'll post them inside the live event page on, on Academy and on and Dashboard, so we'll have that uh, going forward, okay? All right, with that being said, let's now uh, do some benchmarks. And again, we're going to do a couple today, and then we're going to do a couple next week, and make sure that you're all set uh, for the 19th. All right, so here's the, and by the way, these are in no particular order. So a lot of times people say, was well, this one the most important one, and it's really not. So, so here's what you want to do. On a scale, and, and let me say the thing about scales real quick. Um, of, of course, they're subjective. You can put down the 10 all the way across the board and lie to yourself. It's totally fine. So here's what I found. There's three types of there. There are three types of evaluators that I run across. Those who are wildly optimistic on how good they are, right? And they give themselves like nines and tens across the board, but yet they're not super successful. So how can you be so good? And not still achieve great, right? So that's a, that's always an interesting question. And then I've got the others who are so harsh on themselves. You know, they're very successful, multi-million dollar people, and they're like two and they 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 you know they they rate themselves twos, threes, and fours across the board because they're so harsh on themselves, right? And then I got somebody's more of a balanced approach. Uh, look, only you know how you're going to handle this. I'm just going to ask you to be as objective as possible. And to be as honest as possible. Again, we're not going to go collect these, right? And I'm not going to say, hey, send them in and let's let's you know let's publish them. This is for you. But here's what I'm going to do. I'm always going to give you what I consider to be the standard, and then you'll come off of that. So for number one, I always say this, and I'll say it again: you better be really damn sure you're a ten. So will you? So if you check that ten box. What you're saying is there's zero room for improvement, zero. I can't get any better than I'm doing. I'm, I can I can do what Joe does. I can come and talk about this business plan stuff, right? That's a, I wouldn't give myself a ten, and I teach it. Okay, so here's the scale. A, a nine, a nine would be I've got a plan that's written out, whether it's whether it's in practice power, PDF, or whatever I've done. And I read the whole thing, whole thing, every day. So there's not a day I don't get, I don't leave my house without brushing my teeth. I don't start my day without reading my plan. That's a nine, okay? So what I want you to do is go in here, right? And maybe you give yourself a seven, you know, whatever. And please, somebody did this to me last year in a live event. Well, can we have like, can we have, can we have, can we have half numbers like 7.5 and 6.5? And I'm like going, obviously you're a very detailed technician, right? And of course he was, right? So no, whole numbers, pick a number, right? Put it in there. And then what I want you to do 
is you not take a ton of time, but like a minute, and say why. So you know the one thing is to score yourself. The important thing is why do you score yourself that way? So is it that you were inconsistent? Uh, is it that you know maybe you know you read it once in a while, uh, or maybe you gave yourself like a two and you say you know I did the damn thing. I forgot where the hell I put it, right? And I haven't looked at it. Here's the interesting part about this. So go ahead and do do this question real quick. It's it, from a coaching perspective and just maybe common sense perspective for me. I find it quite shocking, quite frankly, that I've been doing this now for literally almost 25 years, that I'll run across people in this industry who actually do business plans, and I think it's great, right? Now, quite frankly, some of them um, are like two-page handwritten, two handwritten legal pads, right? So it's like, okay, that's like two pages of this and this, and, but anyway. At least they did something, right? But then I say, well, great, you know, A, you know, so maybe you spend two hours on it, or I've had people spend days on it, and I say, well, okay, so when you got done with it, how often did you review it? How often did you look at it? How often did you really kind of get, your, get around it again? Oh, I, I, you know, I did and I haven't looked at it since. Or I look at it every once in a while. Or I read it in January and then by April I, I totally forgot about it. Right? I mean, all these crazy things. And so, so to me, here's the one commitment I want you to make. If you're going to come with me on this journey today, next Wednesday, and then the 19th, 20th, 21st, and we're going to spend, think about this, you're committing three, four-hour chunks of your day, of your life, right, 12 hours, not including prep, not including what we're doing here, not including any tweaking that you need to do, you're, putting a, you're going to make a significant time investment in this, right? Don't bother making the time investment if you're not going to bother to read the damn thing. Just don't, don't do it. Because at the end of the day, it's intellectually stimulating. You'll be excited for a couple days, and guess what? Gone. So when you think about it, when you think about a seven, or again, my example here, why? Inconsistency, totally, un, totally not clear on it. Whatever you want to do. Next question: What has to happen to go to get a number? So let me explain this really first. Um, Based upon what number you put in there, so like for example, I put in here seven as an example. So I'm going to ask myself, I say, okay, here's why I gave myself a seven, and what do I need to do to get a nine? And so maybe my brain goes, well, the reason why I gave it a seven is I was inconsistent in reading. I did it, I read it, I read it, but I didn't read it every day. Then I go, okay, why didn't I read it every day? And maybe because it was somewhat inconvenient to read. Maybe I had to go get it. Maybe I had to go look it up. Maybe I had to go log in to Practice Power, right? And and as much as I love Practice Power, you know, we you know we we went through a lot of time and energy to where you can actually uh, print each one of these models in the business plan, print the PDF, put them in Evernote, print the PDF, or print them out and bind them. All right. So so real quick, what I've done. And I've got away. So, so here's where my business plan resides, real quick. It resides in Evernote, Evernote, right? And so that means I grab it on my phone. I can get it on my iPad's charging there, so you can't see it. Um, so I can do that. The second place my business plan resides is here, in my Levenger. I have it in the back section there. I have it all printed out. Um, and this baby, by the way, is like attached to my hip when I walk around. Not like streets, but in my office. In my, this is on my nightstand. So every morning when I wake up, I'm, the first thing I do when my eyes when my eyes start working is I'm reading it because I realize to be consistent with reviewing your plan, you have to have it conveniently accessible. So having that, so for some of you who do the plan and put it in a file cabinet or put it in, put it in the desk drawer, here's what I want you to do: I want you to commit this upcoming year to find a mechanism or mechanisms. I got it both places, right? My plan is on practice. By the way, I do the same process. This is my process. This is what I use for myself. It resides on practice power. I have it in Evernote. I even have it as a Google Doc. So you know, and, and even in Box.net. I mean, I got it in several places, right? And now, why do I have it in Evernote? Because I can access it on my phone. I can access it on my iPad. I can access it on my computer. I have it in several different places, right? The reason why I have it hard copied, which is a little bit of a change for me. I realize that I'm old enough to still like paper, and there's something tactile about having that. Okay, 
So what do you need to do to set yourself up so that it's part of what you do in my brain every morning as part of your morning ritual, which is, which is what we'll get to in a little second. Now, next question. Why is it a must for you? So, so why is it a must? So if you sit there and say, because crazy, crazy Coach Joe says I need to do this, it's hardly going to be, it's going to get you going, okay? So here's what you need to think about. If you can't find a second pillar of reasons why this is important to you, you're not going to do it. Um, now, I can tell you why it's important to me, and I can share with you some distinctions that way. Maybe that will help uh, some of you, you know, conceptually get used to it. So here's the first thing. You know, why is it a must? Because it becomes your, it becomes your Bible. It becomes kind of what you want to create. It's, a, it's your narrative. It's your story that you want to go build. It's your blueprint, right? Why go through all this rigmarole and then kind of abandon it? It makes no sense to me. Um, the other thing you want to do, you want to treat it as a li living document. So living documents need to be read, they need to be updated, they need to be tweaked, they need to be edited. You know, I mean, I do business planning with people throughout the year. I mean, I just, talk, I just took on a brand new platinum partner back in August of this year, and we spent August and September doing one thing and one thing only, putting the plan together. Now, we could have waited till now, but that is what we're going to do, right? So let's not wait, let's get it done, and, and you'll come in here and we'll tweak it, right? And that's what we're doing. Don't ask your client to give you their financial goals and what they want and this big, you know, don't, don't ask your clients for stuff that you're not willing to do for yourself. I think that's incredibly incongruent. You know, one of the things that I've been very blessed with and what makes me very effective in what I do is I can come from a place of absolute congruency. My plan, my morning ritual, my daily game plan, how I operate. I can speak from a place of, of, of that level of congruency. And when you can speak from that place of congruency, you can influence. You know, because human beings know when you're BSing them. They just do. Okay? So come up with a set of compelling, again, what do you want to make it a narrative or bullet points? Why it's a must, why it's a must for you to improve the score. Okay? Now, let's talk about math and emotions. Last question on the benchmark. Going forward, past is the past. I can't, you know, if you've been screwing off on your, on your business plan for 10, 20, 15 years, we can't go back in time and fix that. It's done. But here's what you can do. You can, de you can make a determination what the price is going forward if you don't handle it. Okay? So if you're at 4 or 5, and you know you need to be at least a 7, 8, what's the price that you're going to pay going forward economically and emotionally by not handling this? No is one of the key things. I mean, how can you be in business without a business plan, without a set of goals, without a, a road map? Right? All those things. So I want you to go now take a moment and think about, you know, because look, here's the reality. Human beings evaluate consequences. If you don't have a big enough consequence to change, not going to. Very simple. Right? It's all about getting leverage on yourself. So when you review this, but what you're going to do as part of this is when we come back, you know, and start the planning process in a couple of weeks, this is going to be fresh in your mind. This is serious business. I'm not here because I got nothing better to do. I'm here because I know this is important. Okay? So get the price. And we're going to do one more benchmark. And then we're going to pause and we'll do the other ones. We already did the narrative part, uh, again, in our next segment. So let's cover the next benchmark. Morning Success Ritual, MSR. Uh, in, in practice power, there's a whole section developed to dedicate to Morning Success Rituals, right? So again, you know, we're, going move, we're going to move a little quickly now, since we did the first one. Scale of 1 to 10, uh, 9 being, in my mind, again, top. So what's a, what's a 9 look like? Here's what a 9 looks like. Every morning you get up and you execute your morning ritual. What's part of the morning ritual? Here's what it looks like. You do your business plan review. You do your power questions. You do your visualizations. You review your monthly game plan. You, if you have a vision board, you'll peek that. You'll do some mental diet. Maybe you'll do some exercise, right? The thing what you, I mean, I want you to think in terms of optimal when you just have one of those kick-ass morning rituals and, you know, it just kind of flows into the rest of the day. That's what we're after, okay? That's, that's a nine, right? 
Go to the next question. Why did you give yourself a score? Again, was it, you know, again, if you're going to rank yourself like a 2-3 or maybe even a 1, you're like, and look, for some of you, maybe you are a 1. Maybe you're here for the first time, and you're going, what the heck is he talking about? What morning ritual, my morning ritual is like get up, uh, grab, a, grab a cup of coffee, the Wall Street Journal, and put Fox News on. And you wonder why you walk around pissed off at the world all the time, right? Anyway, um, why do you give yourself that score? You know, why did you come up with that number? Again, doing parts of it, doing parts of it inconsistently, doing none of it, give yourself, to give yourself that, that score. And again, subjective, I understand that, but give yourself that benchmark. Okay. Next question, what must you do to improve the score? A couple things. Number one, if you haven't done so and, 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 you, uh, and you, know, you have the price you have to pay, is the first thing you could do is go into practice power in the academy here. You know, maybe I'll take a second. And, you know, it's the beauty of having this, so just hang with me. I'm going to go back for a second, a couple clicks. Right? We're going to go to, uh, I think it's in Practice Management Center. We'll find out in a second. How to create a powerful morning success ritual part one. E-learning, there you are. It's probably, oh, I would say probably an hour and a half, all modules, right? You want to learn how to do it? Put it together, there it is, you have it. Then the other thing you can do, you have the morning success ritual builder right here. I'll walk you through it. Power questions, visualizations, uh, focus, checklist, all of it's there. Right, so I'm just gonna show you what's in here, so you have a have a sense of that. So let's get back to our business plan builder. So number one, if you haven't done so, maybe if you got an idea over the next week or two, or at least before at minimum before the beginning of next year, take a peek, get comfortable with it, understand what we need to do. Um, I will say this: I can predict a person's success in this business with a high degree of certainty, predicated upon their morning ritual. It is when I look at day-to-day -day behaviors, it is the first thing I look at, it is the most important thing I look at. The morning ritual is what I call the success hub. It is, it is impossible to make changes, it is impossible to elevate if you're getting up and running around. Right? This is important. Okay? So, what must you do? Some of you need to understand what it is. So there's your day, there's your, there it is for you, right? Others know what it is, and you have to do a better job of being consistent with it. So again, how do we get more consistency? First question, what causes the inconsistencies? Is it we are up too late? Is it we're not organized? Like think about it. So you know, maybe you need to have your like I have my business plan in front of me, right? First thing I get up where it's on my iPad, also I can have it there too that way. Um, I have my workout clothes, literally out the night before, like literally, I get up and I I don't have to go looking. I don't have to go looking for anything. It's all there, right? So think about what sabotages it, and then what's the opposite of it, right? Uh, maybe for some of you, and look, this is all this get this gets all intertwined. But let me say this: the quality of your sleep, the quality of your health, the quality of your nutrition. All those things lead into how to do that. So again, I think I think that's what you need to take a look at is make sure very good. Oh, real quick, hey Paul, thanks a lot. I'll see you hopefully next week. Um, you know, all these things lead into getting up early enough in the morning to do what you need to do. But if you're exhausted in the morning and you don't sleep well and you're stressed out of your mind, this is what you need to control. This is what you need to change. All change happens, the, the morning ritual is the hub of that change. If you don't control your mornings, it is hard to control your life. It is hard to control your business. Just a fact. Okay? Why is it a must? I think I laid it out for you all. Pretty simple why. It's a must. This to me is foundational. You know, like I said, this is my success hub, my foundation. Uh, this is one of the things I focus on. You know, it's been funny. You know, I've been doing morning rituals for 25, 30 years now, in one shape or the other. And what I think is cool, which I think is cool, uh, there there are now books out about morning rituals, uh, studies on morning rituals, 
uh, narratives on what successful people do in the morning, CEOs, athletes, all this, just to drive more awareness of what the ritual is all about. So again, very, very important from that perspective. Okay, last piece, and then we'll pick up the rest next week and we'll go a little bit quicker, obviously, um, is what's the price you'll likely pay economically or emotional by not raising your standard? Look, I can't equivocate it. I can't, I can't quantify it because it is huge. It is huge for everybody. Like I said, I know, and I, I look. I'll put my I'll put my reputation as a coach on the line here. I know that if you get your morning ritual locked down, like I'm showing you in practice power, going through the check marks, the benchmarks, you do that. I know it's going to improve your results. Factual, unequivocal in my mind, not a doubt in my mind. You don't have a solid morning ritual. Look, you're all over the place, and and I know you've all done this. And for the most part, you've had, you did your ritual, you checked your boxes off, you did your discipline, you did your morning ritual, you did your daily game plan, and lo and behold, wow, the day went pretty well, right? A equals B. And then we as human beings, we get lazy. We drop our standards. And the next thing you know, we're, um, you know, we're kind of out there doing, uh, doing, you know, other things. So. Real quick, you know what? We're gonna do one more because I don't want to be crunched next week. So we're gonna do this. We got 15 minutes. I said we'll go up to an hour. I got 15, so I want to cover this one. This important one. So let's move to the next benchmark: positive mindset and belief set. So let me let me quantify this first on what this what this is. Okay, I am not sitting here saying I want you to be delusionally happy, like you know, hey, everything's great, and you know, your car is being repossessed, and and you're losing your top clients, and oh, life is great. No, no, that's like stupidity. That's like being uh, kind of weird, right? I'm saying, and look, on module number two, so so so, uh, session one on the 19th, I'm going to spend a good chunk of that session, you know, on belief sets, and belief systems, and all that. Okay, but here's what I'm looking for. I'm not asking you to give yourself a 10 and be delusionally happy. Here's what I'm going to ask you. Do you believe that you can overcome obstacles? Do you believe that no matter what happens in your business, you'll always find a way to pull it off? Do you believe that no matter what happens externally, you know, from who runs your company to what the S&P does to who occupies the White House to any of that stuff, at the end of the day, it's up to you that you are still in control, that, you're mass, that you are the, the co-creator of your world. You believe that, right? And that's what I'm talking about. I'm talking about you know getting it to happen at that level, not being delusionally happy. It's not a happiness test, okay? That that not only do you have that belief set, but you believe you're very good at what you do, that you give massive value to your clients, that you deserve every dime that you make. In fact, you probably you believe you're underpaid for what you make, what you get because of the value you create. And that's not being arrogant. That's just understanding gratitude. That's understanding that you're competent, that you're good, that you're congruent. Right? That's what I'm saying. The other thing I'd look at is what is our mental diet? So what do we ingest, right? So are we are we, you know, are we listening to good things? Are we watching good things? Are we reading good things? Are we around the right type of people? Again, associations matter. So if you're with a bunch of guys or gals that are negative and caught up in all the all the all the uh, you know the vortex of our world, and you wonder why you can't pull yourself out of a rut, hey, it's the company you keep. So go ahead, and self rank yourself one to nine. Again, ten doesn't exist. Why? Now, do you go look? We're all human. We all have bad days. Look, I have bad days. You know, it, you know, so can, can I get up not feeling good? Maybe I'm ill. Maybe you know, I didn't sleep well, and you know, I'm not exactly where I need to be. Sure, it happens. It happens a lot. But you know what? Because of my morning ritual, because of my because of my mental diet, because of reading my business plan and all that, I can take where I'm at a level three, four, and I can get myself to a seven, eight, nine by running a process. Right? That's the difference. Can you turn it on when you need to turn it on, right? 
and and also think about in terms of abundance and, and gratitude. So here's the other piece. I don't know some of you on this call personally. Some of you I do, some of you I don't. But you're here, one of, you're, you're coming out of this year one of three ways. Very excited, thrilled, you know, really jazzed that you had a tremendous year. You checked all the boxes, right? Whatever they were for you. Some of you are sort of in the middle. Did well in some areas, didn't do so well in other areas. And some of you are sitting there going, it just sucked. Thank God it's almost over. I don't care what three, what, which one of the three you are. Here's what I will say to you. You need to be, you should be grateful that, guess what, next year you get to do it all over again in terms of the opportunity. So if you had a great year this year, guess what? Prove it to yourself. Not only you can do it again, but you can elevate in 2017. If you had an okay year, prove to yourself that you can put it all together. If you had a crappy year, prove to yourself that you can turn it around. You can always be grateful and positive about those things, right? So why do you give yourself the score? What must you do in order to improve? So let's talk about strategies. So I'm going to give you strategies real quick. So how does somebody go south? How does somebody go negative? Here's what that looks like. Bad mental diet. What's a bad mental diet? News, news, and more news. Number two, an absence of goals and an absence of a vision. When you, when you don't have a goal and a vision, you default to scarcity, survival. And you have this scarcity, survival, or I call S-squared mindset. You know what the S-squared mindset looks like? Getting through the day. Hopefully I can make enough money to pay my bills this month. It's this, I hope they say yes to me. I can't afford to lose another client. I got this client, I hate them, but they're paying me, so I gotta deal with them. That's what S-squared looks like. Then you're around people, right? Colleagues, friends, family, who are just negative, right? They just, they're just like that. That's what it looks like. So how do you change it? So what must you do? Change the narrative. Change your, it's like health, right? So if you're eating cookies and cakes and McDonald's and Burger King and, and drinking, you know, Cokes, and you feel like shit, excuse my language, we're not going to give you a pill and tell you to keep doing that, right? You know, that's what the medical industry would like to tell you to do, right? What do you need to do? You need to change your, you got to change what you put in, right? You got to get rid of going to McDonald's, you got to change your diet to improve your health. It's the same thing here. Change what goes in here. I'm not saying to live in a cave and not know what goes on. Hey, look, I am very well versed in everything that goes on in this country, in this world, in this industry. I just know where to take it in, right? For example, and, it, and this is not the best example, but I'm, it's the one that's in my brain, so I'm going to give it to you. If you like a glass of wine, or maybe even two or three, right? Some people say it's good for you. Some people say it's not good for you. Let's just not even have that conversation. But where are most people going to do that? Are they going to do it at lunch? Remember, what, 30 years ago, 20 years ago? What was kind of the, the male business thing to do? What, the three martini lunch, the two martini lunch? Remember all that? Now our society say, man, you don't drink at lunch. You just, it's just unappro it's inappropriate, right? And so now, you, now maybe you have a couple drinks or a couple glasses of wine at dinner, right? At night, right? Well, at night, I don't care, right? Because if I, if I get a little buzzed up, I'm done. Well, so that's where I do my news. So where I get my, where I read my news, my world affairs and all that jazz, I do it late evening, supper time, whatever you want to call it. Because you know why? I've crushed my day, right? You don't, you're not going to start your, you're not going to start your day with cocktails, right? Does because you're not going to have a good day. So don't start your day with the news. Glance it if you have to, but don't fill your brain with it. And do yourself that when you're in your office unbookmark all that crap. Don't enable yourself. Get rid of it all. Just delete, 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 right? Get rid of it. Next order of business, right? So that, so that, so candle the mental diet. Next thing, your associations. Some of your associations you might be married to. I can't help you in that regard, right? 
But if you've got business people, if you've got colleagues, you got buddies, friends, that, you know, are just, man, it's just a drag. Every time you talk to them, whether they text you, they phone you, they pop in your office, it's just a drag. You gotta make some decisions there. Remember, you are the sum of the closest five people in your world. That's what some people say. Maybe it's eight, maybe it's four. Again, that's what they say. Change your associations, change your mental diet. Two things, do your morning ritual. That's number three. Three strategies. Next question, why must you improve it? This is the ultimate personal development business. At the end of the day, you are the product. I don't care about your planning, your portfolio skills. I don't care about all that. You are the product. The, vet, the old saying, the person buys you first, then they buy what you're selling. That is a universal truth. We may use different terms today. It's still true. And here's the other thing, too. Your psychology is totally your choice. Nobody tells you how to think. It's called free will. One of the most interesting things I've seen, and I'm talking about transformative things with clients that I have, is when I have somebody and they, they doubt themselves. Now, what I do as a coach is it's a line, right? I can't want something for somebody more than they want it for themselves. But here's what I can do. I can believe in them. And I can say, you could do this. And here's why I know that. And I can start to help them get their must, right? Their compelling reasons. Their reasons why. And because it's a choice. And, you know, we all know somebody who seems to be just so happy all the time. And, and you know, like life is just a, you know, uh, a, I guess what's a box full of chocolates, whatever they say, right, uh, in the movie. And you sit there and go, what is it, like, you know, are they on Prozac, right? Did they go to their doc? Like, why are they, like, cool, right? And it, what you realize for most people, it's a choice. Just a choice. Because here's the reality. You have to feel, you know, well, I'll say it, my belief is you have to feel grateful for being in this industry. And I know there's a lot of bitching lately because of all the rules and regulations, Right? But at the end of the day, here's the truth. You show me another profession, you show me another career, I want you to think about this for a second. You show me another profession, another career, where you can be basically a screw up, flying by the seat of your pants and still make six figures. And you work part time, because even though you're in your office eight to 12 hours a day, you're screwing off half of them anyway. And we all know that and yet you make six figures. You know how hard people have to work to do that in the real world? So you can always be grateful for being here in this world, okay? So that's what you, so why is it a must? Hopefully I give you some ideas on there. Last thing, price. To me it's the ultimate price. To me it's the ultimate price. I can't, again, I can't quantify it. I've had people triple their business once they get their psychology right. They were, because look, here's my belief. What's holding any of you back from achieving what you want is rarely more education. I don't believe in most cases being smarter is the problem. I think where the challenge lies is that you haven't mastered your own psychology. You'll hear me talk about a term, by the way, this is, what's, this is what's cool about doing this stuff live versus just the recordings. The recordings are a couple years old, they're still good, but I'm always shifting. And one of the terms that I'm gonna give you when we get together uh, on the 19th, 20th, and 21st is what I call your POS, Personal Operating System. Most human beings, 99 out of 100, do not understand their own operating system, how they're wired, why they do the things they do, why they don't do the things they need to do. And at the end of the day, it all boils down to what's in here. I Look, I appreciate, I respect, in some cases I love 
all the practice management guys and gals running around our industry, right? All these other coaches, if you will. And I have great respect for them. We all do a little bit different thing, right? But for a lot of you, what's not, you don't need another CRM. You don't need another segmentation project. You need to get your shit together and make a commitment. And it's my show, so I can curse if I want and use the words I want. You need to get yourself together and make things happen and draw a line in the sand to say, you know what, enough of being average, it's time to go ahead and be excellent. So we're a couple minutes out. I want to thank you all for being here. So let me kind of explain what's going to happen now. So next week, I'm going to do exactly what I did today. I'm going to walk you through the rest. We may go a little faster, right, because we've got a lot to do. But, we'll do. but again, we did the whole kind of how we're going to do things. If you haven't registered for the business planning uh, live uh, live cast, 19th, 20th, 21st, uh, in the live event section, so re real quick, and then I'll let you go. I know we, we're all busy. So you go back here. You go to Coaching web, Webcast. Excuse me, is this Coaching Webcast? Here's the registration link. You register. Come spend three, and you'll see 12 to 4, 12 to 4, 12 to 4 Eastern. Come spend three days with me. Let me help change. Let me help shift you. Give me the privilege of helping you shape your 2017. Thank you all for being here. I appreciate it. I know we're all busy. Hey, we'll, next part two, next Wednesday. So make sure you register also for next Wednesday's webcast. We'll have to do part two on this, okay? Thank you all for being here. See you all again in seven days.